This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasonings will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasonings such as the Brits Blend, Coffee and Q's, Norn Heat, the Cajun, Smoked Savory, Two Border, S&P Bud, the Carrie Steak, Discord, Oak, Four Horsemen, the Old Fashioned, and the Mad Hatter. Check out all of these seasonings over at themadcanadianbbq.com. That is themadcanadianbbq.com. Be sure to use the promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the SLOOPCAST also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle, I have, I have, some, I have some stuff. I have stuff. Uh, this is the cast iron. Uh, this is one of the sampler bags. So I just want to hold that up for our YouTube people. Uh, it's a for a sampler bag, and it's four ounces. Uh, it's 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 actually really nice, just to give you a comparison to like a, a beer can. There, it's pretty. Like I said, you get six of these uh, in a sampler, and uh, they they're all individually sealed, so it's going to stay fresh a lot longer. I got the ride or die right here. And I got a bag of unicorn right here. You can find all of this and a bunch of amazing coffees at ironbeancoffee.com. That's ironbeancoffee.com, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube? Aren't you glad? Hey, guy, you, you want to? You want to hear something? You want to hear something fun, YouTube? Mm -hmm. We're not going to talk anything about any elections. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Ugh. I just, I won't, I won't, I'm not going to, not going to talk any further about it so as not to out myself. <laughs> That's it. We don't do that here. <sighs> this is a, an escape away. We have a football game this weekend. So that will be fun. That will be very fun. As soon as I'm done here, I'm going to go walk, watch some Mac football because we're recording this on a Wednesday night. So, you know, a little bit of Wednesday night Mac action. All right, let's kick it off here. Yep, let's, let's join our audio listeners. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you, Jared? Oh, I'm doing just fine. I'm just doing fine? just just fine. But Jared, not not Kyle. That's not like eh, just fine. No, it's like just fine. There's there, there's a real inflection difference with the phrase "just fine." Well, Jared, after we get done recording here, we get to watch we get to watch some action. That's it's, it's kind of why I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to watch some action after this. Yes. All right. Let's get right into it here. Um, let's go ahead and start off with some Buckeye news for the week. Uh, let's talk basketball. Let's talk sure. basketball here. Um, Bad news, unfortunately. Unfortunately, yeah. Abel Porter, uh, who's the transfer from Utah State, um, won't be stepping on to the Schottenstein court this year. Uh, he was diagnosed with a rare heart disease, which ends his basketball career. Yeah. Uh, just so we're clear, this has nothing to do with the pandemic, with anything mm -hmm. like that. This is not related to that in any way. Um, just because that and heart swelling and yada, yada, yada is on the forefront of everyone's mind, but just this is not related to that. Yep. And so this is just another layer of bad news for the Buckeye basketball team because you're already out with Seth Towns and Musa Jallo as well. Not looking, not looking pretty good for the start of, well, not even the start of basketball. Yeah. Basketball hasn't even started yet. It, it's weirdly close though. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. it is weirdly close. Just because it feels like we just started, because we did in the Big Ten sphere, just started football and basketball is legitimately not that far away. Yeah. Which kind of sucks when you're doing a podcast 
to be honest. You kind of want those things spread out as much as possible for content. Yep. Uh, more bad injury news. Um, we, we are, and this is uh, probably pretty old news to most of the people listening. Uh, we had speculated that their Cam Brown's injury was probably an Achilles injury uh, that has since become official. And an Achilles injury is not a, not a thing you come back from easily or quickly. Uh, he will miss the remainder of the season. This will leave seven banks taking most of the reps at CB2 for the rest of the season. Yep. Good news. Good news here is that we have two black stripes. We have wide receiver Marvin Davis. Or a lack of black stripes. Yeah. A removal have... of black stripes. Yes. <laughs> we have wide receiver walk on. Marvin Davies and kicker freshman kicker Jake Siebert. Yeah, uh, Jake Siebert in a regular world would not have seen the field this year. Prop maybe would have gray shirted. Uh, may may not even been on the team in a regular season because that's kind of how Ohio State handles their kickers and their punters. You only want one of them on scholarship at the same time, and so on and so forth. And you also just don't want to burn that eligibility. Well, no one's burning eligibility this year. So you can go ahead and throw Jake Siebert in a game now because uh, Blake Hobble, Hobbill is not official. This is, has not been made official, but he has a groin injury and maybe potentially isn't going to play in this game upcoming. Siebert was not available. Uh, I don't believe he made the trip to Happy Valley last week. And he, I assume, will be dressed and ready to to potentially be <laughs> the kicker for Ohio State this weekend. Yeah, all we know is that Blake is recovering from a groin injury. Yeah. That, that's and, all, is all that's been released. And, and yeah, we do not know in any official status that he will or won't be playing. Yeah. Or he might try. It might be a game time decision. Uh, he tried last week. It didn't go well. So we'll see. Yep. All right, let's talk about uh, oh, one more thing. We have one more. Real quick. an update here for next weekend. The Ohio State Maryland game will be a 330 kickoff on BTN. There you go. Very, very interesting, but 330 BTN. Why is that interesting? I just it feels... I don't know. Ohio State normally doesn't play a three thirty. That's what's interesting. It's either noon or night. Noon or night. Well, keep in mind typically, typically. And and technically this game by the way, we just want to point out that Ohio State's about to play a night game in November, which under normal circumstances was a no no. Big Ten doesn't play night games in November traditionally. So this is about the time where you see a lot of those 330 games in yep. November. But like I said, Ohio State's playing Rutgers this weekend at night in November. Now, mm -hmm. Piscataway, New Jersey isn't t t the environment that those rules are typically invented for. But yeah. All right, Kyle. Um, went over the Ryan Day press conference and the, they're just there. It was death. There was just wasn't much to talk about. <laughs> so we're, I'm canceling Deciphering Day. For this week because uh, I respect everyone's time too much. So instead, right. let's talk a little bit of recruiting. We um, haven't talked about recruiting in a while. Here. No, we typically don't during the season because we just don't have time during the season. But like I said, deciphering day would have been death this this uh, this week. So we're going to cancel deciphering day. We're going to do a little bit of recruiting. Not going to spend a ton of time on it. I picked out four players to talk about. Uh, four players to keep an eye on for both the 2021 and 2022 class. This has been, this was partially motivated by the fact that Derek Davis, and if you listen to us during the off season, you, you know, Derek Davis is a very valuable target for Ohio state from the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, he is a safety. He's a true safety. There's a lot of sort of hybridy, safeties in the Ohio state recruiting class. Derek Davis is a true safety. Uh, it would be really nice to, to have him on top of the fact that by the way, he's really good. 
just outside the top 50 overall. Mm -hmm. So one of the best players in the entire country. He's set to announce his commitment this weekend. Kyle, we're officially late in the cycle. We're about six weeks away we are. from the initial recruiting day, the mm-hmm. early recruiting day. So we're no longer early in the cycle. You can probably bet that whomever Derek Davis chooses is going to end up being the team. You don't, you don't typically see a flip happen in that short of a window. So yeah, like we miss the, we, we always kind of joke when you said this is the early part of the recruiting cycle. Yeah. And now we're saying we're in the late cycle. We never hit the middle cycle. I think we talked a lot of recruiting like in September and August where we were just kind of right there in the sweet spot. All right. All right. Who, who else do we have here to keep an eye on? Well, real quick, Derek Davis Jr. Like I said, announcing this weekend, yes. um, Kyle, how, how are we feeling? How are we feeling as far as Ohio State's chances here? Now, the crystal balls are all Penn State, but I'd say that all of those crystal balls were placed a while ago mm-hmm. and that Derek Davis Jr. is uh, notoriously secretive with his recruiting. Yeah, it's it's tough because... Just honestly, it just really depends on how well he really likes how how state operates. I'm trying to remember who it is, but they, they showed it against the Penn State game. No, no, I, actually, was it um, was it Justin Fields? Oh, there was somebody who said, "Oh, hey, I went to yeah, yeah, I went to it was the Justin game. Fields. Yep, I went to the game um as um as a visit to Penn State." I ended up liking the team, but for the, for Ohio state though, on the other the team across the field though. Yeah. Uh, well, this, this, could this be here? Maybe it could be where it comes to the game and would well, really like how Ohio state does. Well, and of course these guys can't go to the games this year. So that sucks. But of course he's watching it on TV. He took a mm-hmm. road trip to, to LSU in an, like a super duper unofficial capacity. Yeah. So uh, I, to me, I think it's probably right now, I'm going to say it's like 55 for Penn State, 45 Ohio State. I'm, I'm actually giving Ohio State the nod. I've broken it down like this. I'm giving Ohio State a 60%, giving Penn State a 30%, and I'm keeping LSU at like a 10%. But uh, honestly, no one really knows. Ooh, he's curious he's, on you having... Um, LSU at ten percent. I mean, I mean LSU is not DBU. <laughs> Neither is Penn State. All right, a uh, couple more players from the twenty twenty one class. Uh, JT Tuimo Lau. Uh, I almost had it. Almost, almost. Ameka Buka. These are the two kids from Washington. We talked about them the entire off season. They haven't committed yet. Don't expect JTT to commit during the early recruiting period. I think that's a that's a later recruiting situation for him. Uh, that being said, I still feel great that both of these guys are coming to Ohio State. This, you know, we all would have liked to have seen them commit by now. Both of them are trying to hold out for trips. When you are, you know, each of them a top 10 player in the entire country, you can hold out because they'll, they'll hold the spot for you. That being said, Ohio state, Ohio state, Ohio state. I feel, I feel great about both of these guys. Okay, good. That's good to hear. I mean, JTT is the number one ranked strong defensive end. Emeka is the number one ranked receiver in the country. Yeah. And last name for the 2021 class. I want to mention real quick, uh, Rayshon Davis. Rayshon Davis is a current LSU commit. He committed to LSU on January 1, 2020, which, you know, sort of caught up in the emotion of a national title uh, run. Yeah. Yeah. They, they hadn't won. Yep. There was a couple, that was like another week yet, but they had won a playoff game at that point. And mm-hmm. uh, now LSU's not, not looking so great. Neither and, is their defense. <laughs> Nothing about LSU looks great right now. <laughs> Rayshon Ray Davis uh, is a guy that Ohio State has been going after for a long time. 
Uh, he goes to the Mater Day High School in Santa Ana, California, which is a high school that Ohio State is desperately trying to get a relationship with. Rayshon Davis is uh, an excellent player, uh, number 38 overall in the country, top three player from the state of California, top three outside linebacker in the entire country. Uh, a couple months ago, I would have said no chance for Ohio State. Now, there's a chance. I'm not saying it's a good chance. I'm not saying it's a great chance. But when you have a top 50 player in the country, even if there's a little bit of a chance, it's worth talking about. It's worth keeping an eye on. Absolutely. All right, Kyle, let's talk 2022 now. Yeah, this seemed to be the the thing to talk about this week because, I mean, who else are you going to talk about this week, right? <laughs> not Rutgers. <laughs> so we got a we got about four names here that's really popped up here that want to have our listeners know the names of. Yeah. And potentially could be good news for Ohio State, but definitely keep it keep your ears open for these players here. Yeah. Um first and foremost, uh probably the one of the biggest names in the entire 2022 class. Quinn and I don't know how to pronounce his last name because this is the Sloopcast after all, and he is a 2022 kid. So forgive me. Uh, but Quinn, how, how, you want to help me out on this one, Kyle? I want, to, I want, I want you to struggle. No, I, want, I want to see you struggle. Mm. <laughs> Quinn, you, I, I really don't know. I really just don't know. <laughs> Yours? Sure. Uh, basically, uh, he, <laughs> uh, he is the number one quarterback in the 2022 class. He's the number two overall player in the 2022 class. And he's the number one player from the state of Texas. And that I already mentioned, he's a quarterback. Yeah. I'm going to go with yours. 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 That's prob- you. Like, you. Y O O. U R Z. Yours. Ewers. 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 Quinn Ewers. So it's like Y-O-U apostrophe E-R-S. Ewers. Or. <laughs> it's kind of a Yuns. Sure. Sure. Maybe it's, you know, in Pittsburgh, they say Yuns. And maybe in Texas, they say Ewers. 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 Okay. All right. Quinn Ewers. We're going Ewers until someone tells me I'm wrong. Quinn Ewers. Uh, like I said, one of the best players in the entire 2022 class. I've heard the comparison that he's basically Joe Burrow with uh, just basically a, a more college ready Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow, obviously great, did not come out of high school college ready. No, I think Joe Burrow was a four star. He, yeah, he was a, no, he's very high. He's a solid four star, but yeah, I mean, this is a ranked. The composites ranked number two, twenty four seven sports has him ranked the best player. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, the composite has him at a nine 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 four. I've heard say that he is the best quarterback to come out of high school since Lawrence and Fields who were basically neck and neck in yeah. their respect in, in their recruiting class. Ohio, uh, he decommits from Texas. He is not committed yet to Ohio state. It feels like it's a thing that's going to happen at some point this month. Now, 2022. So Kyle, where are we in this recruiting cycle? We're very we're late. Early. No, no. Uh, 2022. Uh, 2022. Yes. We're very early in this recruiting cycle. So, All right, uh, another name to keep an eye on, Caleb Burton, uh, another player from Texas. He is a wide receiver, uh, smaller, shiftier type player, maybe more of a slot receiver, but talented nonetheless, top 10 in the entire country, number one receiver in the entire country, and like I said, number three player from the state of Texas. Texas is freaking loaded. I know recruiting update of the century. I know talented kids come from Texas, but he's number three in Texas and number 10 nationally. Good God. 
Now we're talking a little bit about Mater Day High School. Uh, here's another player. This, of course, being the 2022 class. Uh, Damani Jackson. He is a cornerback. Kyle, he is the number three player in the country in the 2022 class. And signs are very good for Ohio State right now. So right now we have more so, more so with Ewers and Burton, more so with Ewers and Burton. They feel like real solid to Ohio State right now, like real, real solid to Ohio State right now. And like I said, that's your number two and number 10 players in the entire 2022 class. Damani Jackson, number three player in the entire 2022 class. And he's looking pretty good to Ohio State. Not not where we have Ewers and Burton, but still very, very positive. The 2022 class is about to blow up in a good way. Not, not in the mm-hmm. way Texas, re- <laughs> their recruiting classes are blowing up. Blowing up in a good way. Yeah. Uh, last name and Kyle, I'm going to, I'm going to need a scouting report from you here. Are you anywhere near pilot mountain in North Carolina? Uh, I drive by it on my way to and from Ohio. Okay. Well, I'm going to need a scouting trip from you. Uh, huh. uh, Benji Gosnell. He sure. is a tight end. Uh, yep. he is just outside the top 10 for tight ends in the country. Uh, just inside the top 10 for players from North Carolina and currently sitting at 265 overall for the entire country. Feel real, real good about Benji. Feeling real, real good here. So that's four names to keep an eye on in the 2022 class. All right. Definitely keep an eye out for Benji here. In case those who... Our curious, like, oh, Pilot Mountain, Pilot Mountain. Pilot Mountain is about just northwest of Winston Salem or Greensboro. That's not terribly far from you. It's about a, it's a good two hour, about two and a half hour drive from. Oh, ah, okay. I was thinking more like one and a half, but you know North Carolina well, much t- better than me, so I'm not going to argue with you. I'm on the other side of Raleigh. <laughs> that's yeah. That that's that's true. I forget. That you like just don't live in the dead center of Raleigh. I, I, I keep going east for some reason. <laughs> I keep moving east. It was Durham, then West Raleigh, now East Raleigh. I, I don't think I want to go any more east, but. All right, uh, Kyle. It's time to do the slew picks, but first, let's do one of our ad reads. You want to go right. or should I go? Uh, sure. Let's talk about the Mad Canadian. Mad Canadian, uh, still writing us those angry emails, but you know what? Yeah, yeah. We love it. We, we do. Love it. Of course, now he just sends us angry emojis in the Discord server. Yes, and he loves it. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. Yes, um, Mad Canadian. Um, we're happy to be um, having him as a sponsor for the past year, um, giving us uh, just some great seasonings over the past year, added a bunch of new seasonings the last 12 months here. is just such a great guy, such a... Um, great seasonings that he's made and i've tried uh quite a bit of these i know jared's tried all of them yeah oh yeah i've had all of them at some point or another i've even had two secret ones that you guys don't know about yet yes uh let's talk about the do do do, let's do the which one do we not give enough love for i feel like we give love ope (laughs) is one i know i don't talk about enough yes the ope the oak. Tell me about the oak here. What what makes the oak so great? Well, it's and what smoked. do you use it on? Well, it's smoked ranch. So it's a uh, perfect Ohio seasoning. Yeah, basically that's what it boils down to. <laughs> that's why it's called the oak. Uh, that that's it. That's 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 the tweet. That's, that's the whole the thing. Se- <laughs> that's the seasoning. Um, Kerry steak, one of my all time favorites. It's a versatile seasoning. Did Goes that on- tonight everything it goes on everything you Not don't know just, what seasoning to put it on and you don't and you don't want to do another salt and pepper blend carry steak can't go that, that being said steak. the salt and pepper blend the s and p bud is 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 pretty great too yes. it's a potato cheat code i don't care how you're doing your potato cutting it up frying it baking it french frying it i, I don't care how you're doing your potato 
the S and P bud is going to elevate that mashed. Yeah, it'll do that. Home fries, of course. Yeah. Be sure to check out those and the other 12. So a total of 14 seasonings that the Mad Canadian currently has available over at themadcanadianbbq.com. That is themadcanadianbbq.com. Promo code SLUCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. All right, Kyle. Let's do the slew picks. All right. All right. Seven games. Uh, we actually get to do seven games Jared, this week. Jared. Yeah. I need us to relax. Let's yeah. stretch out our necks here. We're sucking this year. We need to pick it up. Uh, we need I'm, to pick it up here. I'm doing just fine. Are you? Well, I mean, by my standards, that's the thing. My standards are lower. <laughs> <laughs> you and I right now are tied for fourth. 18 picks. Corrected. Ahead of us is Tanner with 20. Mm-hmm. Mad Canadian is beating us, Jared. Yeah. He has 21. And Jay with 23. Whew. All right. We need, we, need, we got some catching up to do here. Not, not a lot of time left. Okay. I, I think we have a lot of time left, actually. Well, with. Ah, that's, yeah, how, you know, let's, let's, uh, we actually get to do seven games this week, so that's good. Uh, I specifically said, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't put the Wisconsin game on the, yep, no on the schedule. No Wisconsin on here. <laughs> yeah, shouldn't put Wisconsin on the schedule for this week. Their game once again canceled. Maybe, maybe, maybe ever this year. I, yeah, I don't know. Where I, this is going to be the episode where I don't say that word. All right, first game here, Jared. We have BYU taking on Boise State. This is a Friday nighter. Friday nighter. Both teams are undefeated. I believe Boise State's undefeated. We, yeah, but BYU has seven games and Boise yeah. has two. So it's yes. not it's not real app is apples to apples as far as being undefeated goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we have BYU favorite by two and a half points. And I think you kind of alluded to my pick of why I'm going to pick BYU. Seven games versus two games. I understand this is at Boise State. It's going to be a night game under the blue tur- playing on the blue turf there. I just think BYU is just going to, because of the game, amount of games that they've played so far this year, they're just going to be more polished with more experience for this year. I just think they're going to just be too much and two and a half is a good number three and a half might have thought about it a little bit more but i'll definitely take uh byu to cover here mm, we got one difference already i'm going boise with all due respect we're, we're all like real hyped on byu right now and that's that's great they're they're seven and oh that's great last five games louisiana tech mm-hmm the University of Texas, San Antonio, mm-hmm. Houston, and they're 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 real bad this year. Mm-hmm. We've seen some good Houston teams. This isn't one of them. Mm-hmm. Texas State and Western Kentucky. So uh, those are your last five games. So mm-hmm. forgive me if I'm not going to completely jump on the the BYU hype train. And that's not to say that Boise has a bunch of great wins either because their two wins are Air Force and Utah State. But, but, I think what I'm doing here is playing the, I don't know who either, I don't, because I don't know who either of these teams are. Neither of, these are both really good group of five teams. But neither of them have played anyone. I don't know who either of these teams are. Just I'm gonna take the underdog. That's it. This, this just feels like a a black box versus a black box. This is I don't I don't know who either of these teams are. I'm gonna take the underdog. All right, all right, that's fine. Our guest picker this week, Jared, is Austin. Austin. Austin is currently in ninth place with 16. Eek. Well, just two less points than us, so it's not. Yeah, but fourth place versus nine. Yeah, it sounds worse. It sounds a lot worse. (laughs) All right. Let's see what Austin says here. Two and a half points is basically nothing. 
but I but I think both of these teams are equally as good. I really like the BYU quarterback. And I haven't seen much of Boise yet this season because they obviously barely started. This game might as well be a pick 'em, and I had an ex girlfriend who went to BYU, so I'll take <laughs> Boise and the points. Smart, All smart. Right. All right, next up, Jared, we have the team up north mm-hmm. getting on the Hoosiers of Indiana. <laughs> of Indiana. The team up north is a three and a half point favorite. Who do you have, Jared? Uh, Indiana. I I was honestly surprised uh, to, to see Michigan – favored i was i I think i would have taken indiana in a straight pick them i think i would have taken indiana if indiana was like minus two minus three points Mm -hmm. so yeah hell yeah give me indiana indiana with points yeah i'll take indiana with points this one's i really want to point out that michigan state is terrible Michigan State is a terrible football team, and they beat this Michigan team. Mm-hmm. I know. I just, I just don't see this team, this Michigan team, just losing two games in a row here. I just, I just don't see it though. Uh, I think, I think they get their acts together here. I think they're going to be able to just to run all over this Indiana team. Indiana is just going to have to try to, going to try to pass, and we saw that like. During the get during their Indiana's um, actually they won both games. Sorry, um, in the game that we remember against uh, Penn State, where they could barely move the ball against Penn State. There, I feel I feel like they're going to struggle against Michigan, and then as long as Michigan doesn't turn the ball over here, I think Michigan will win here, and I'll I'll take Michigan with the points. I mean that's yeah, okay. I, I really want to fight about this, but we really don't don't have, don't have the time. When in doubt, give me the quarterback, and I'm gonna take Penix. I don't like either. <laughs> I I at least know who Penix is, though. All right, all right. Let's see what Austin says. I think this Indiana team could be a lot of fun. I think their offense could struggle a bit here against the let's go vaunted Don Brown defense. <laughs> I want to see Indiana be undefeated when they play Ohio State. And in order for that to happen, they have to win this game. The points help here, as I think it'll end up be a three-point game either way. So I'll take the points again. Austin and I are synced up. All right. See what we got next here. We have Nebraska, after their bye week, um, taking on Northwestern. Northwestern is a three and a half point favorite. And I got Nebraska. I, I think Nebraska is a lot better team than, than what they sh- um, displayed against Ohio State. I just, Ohio State's just that much of a superior team. I think Nebraska is a good team in general, and I think they're going to show it here. I'll take, I'll take the Cornhuskers. Yeah, I think part of the problem here is that we we we've only seen Nebraska once. We've seen Northwestern twice. The one time we saw Nebraska was against Ohio State, which is just not fair. Yep. We saw at Northwestern slaughter Maryland. We saw them eke out a win against Iowa. Again, we have such small sample size in the Big Ten right now. It's really hard to make quality determinations here. I think ultimately I've seen Northwestern be pretty good. And I just... I I, I, I really just can't, can't get on the Nebraska... Can't get on Nebraska right now. So I'm going to take Northwestern. Uh, it's a small... It's a small... Um, small spread... So it doesn't really scare me off. So I'm, I'm going to stick with Northwestern. Okay. All right. And we have Austin says here, Penn State is the best 0-2 team in the country. And Northwestern might be the worst 2-0 team. They've been two not-so-hot programs to start the year. Nebraska, unfortunately, had to put 
had to open with Ohio State, but they showed a lot of promise. I really do think the line is off here, so I'm taking Nebraska to win outright. All right, next up here we have, oh, I forget what this rivalry is called. Either way, it's Florida and Georgia. Does this game have a name? I I thought they did. It was like something about like between the hedges or something. No, that's that's Georgia. Okay, I don't know what I'm thinking. Either way, it's Florida. I don't know what I'm thinking either. (laughs) It is Florida and Georgia here. Georgia is a four and a half point victory or well, Excuse me, four and a half point favorite. Oh, whoa, hold on. I'm okay. Sorry, I'm super confused. I I have the tabs open for for the games, and yeah. I thought we were doing Houston Cincinnati. Is that one next? That one is next. Okay, so Florida Georgia, <laughs> Florida Georgia does have a nickname, and well. I think, I mean, they used to, I think they replaced it with something else, but it used to be the world's largest cocktail party. And they always used to play it in Jacksonville. Uh, I don't know if that, I'm pretty sure they don't call it the cocktail party anymore because God forbid we encourage college students to drink. Yep. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> I So I, I don't know if they gave it a, uh, a, a less alcoholic name now or, or what the deal is. And quite frankly, I don't care. And I'm tired of talking about it. Let's, let's talk about the actual football game. Yeah. Uh, Georgia favored by four and a half points. Uh, who do you have Kyle? Um, I have Florida. Georgia's offense is just a disaster right now. And it should not be with the, the you amount of ta- defense. Well, their offense is terrible too. I mean, they scored 14 points against Kentucky. 14. They scored 14 points. They've oh been. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I'm, I am a mess right now. I thought you were talking about Florida, Georgia, Georgia's offense is struggling. Whew. <laughs> Come on, Jared. Come on, Jared. I need to quit drinking. <laughs> they scored 14 points against Kentucky. They just, have not looked good at all this year offensively. They just struggled and their talent just overtakes just inferior opponents later in the, in the game here. I just, I just cannot pick Georgia. I I honestly cannot. So I'll take, I'll take the Gators here, even though the Gators defense is bad. (laughs) Yeah. I was about to say, I look, I look at the past. I look at the season so far here. I'll, I'll take my chances here. I'll take my chances. I'll take Florida. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go Georgia. I'm mm-hmm. going to go Georgia. Um, four and a half points is not very much. And I believe that they have a much deeper, more talented roster. That's, that's, that's it. That's the entire thing. That's I, now I'm kind of going against one of my tenants of when in doubt, pick the quarterback Trask. Mm-hmm is a much better quarterback than what, what's his Bennett Stenson Bennett. Uh, yeah, I, whatever it's sort of the deep talented roster versus pick the quarterback. Yeah. Which is, you know, again, probably if, if Georgia had both, it wouldn't be four and a half points, but Mm -hmm. also just give me the depth. Give me the quarterback depth. I'm going to, or excuse me, the overall roster depth and I'm going to take Georgia. Okay. This rivalry, Jared, you'll never guess what it's called now. I know. I will called War for the Or. See, but then they just went and incorporated the word war. And that's because like that that's the thing. Like they they the Oregon, Oregon State game used to be the Civil War, but then they decided they didn't want to call it a, a war. So they just adopted war out of nowhere. They're just going to end up changing that at some point. Maybe. All right. Um, What's Austin say? Austin says here, I'm not sure I've ever seen Georgia look worse through three quarters because we all know the fourth is Georgia choke time against Bama than they did last week. That doesn't fill me with confidence. Their offense can't get anything going, but they face a flurry defense that has left a lot to be desired to start the season. However, 
I think this the I think strength on strength, Florida's offense versus Georgia's defense. Florida with Kyle, and Kyle can come out on top outright. Come on, guys. It just means more. <laughs> he picks Florida. All right, next up here, Jared, we have Houston taking on the Fighting Fickles of Cincinnati. Fighting Fickles are a 13 and a half point favorite. This is a 330 game on ABC. So this might be a game you might want to just have on your side TV to watch. Yeah. All right. Who do you got here, Jared? I'm going Cincinnati. Let's look at their games. Let's look at their games. Yep. So uh, Cincinnati's favorite, you said 13 and a half, right? 13 and a half. Week one, they win by 35 points. Mm-hmm. Week two, they win by 14 points. Against against the, against the Army defense. Yeah. Uh, week three, they win by 21 points. Mm-hmm. F- week four, they win by, is that 29 points? That is 29. You did uh-huh. math, right? Math. And then Memphis, they win by 39 points. Okay. They've won by 14 points at least every single week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll take Cincinnati with a 14 point. Yeah. As a 14 point dog. Yeah. They've, they've, they've they've yet to not do that. And Uh, (laughs) by the way, Memphis SMU at the very least, I, I can make the argument that everyone except Austin P are better than Houston. <laughs> yeah, I'll take I'll take Cincinnati here too. Looking at their similar games here, uh, Houston played UCF. They lost forty four to twenty one. Uh, nope, that's UCF, yeah. not USF. I apologize. Yeah. Never I do, mind. I do that all can't the time. Do that. I do can't that do- all the time. Central Florida, Southern Florida, you know, Southern Florida, the University of Southern Florida is in the middle of the state. Yes. Yeah. Florida. We've had this discussion before. Yeah, I'll take the fighting fickles. I don't need to say much more. I just, their defense just looks really, really good right now. I like them. I like them a lot. All right. Austin says here, I really don't have anything to say here besides that Cincinnati is just, is just better than everyone in the American that's it. This was 14 and a half. I might consider it, but eh, pick Cincinnati. Fair enough. Yes. All right. Next up here, Jared, we have um, the big game here for the weekend. Clemson and Notre Dame. Clemson without without um, Lawrence back at quarterback for Clemson there. Uh, what do we got here? We have Clemson is a five and a half point favorite heading on over to Notre Dame. Who do you have for this uh, game, Jay? Uh, you go first real quick. I need to look at something. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I, I got it. Uh, right. Gosnell, the tight end we were talking about. Mm-hmm. Can we see this on the phone? Literally just uh, committed okay. to Ohio State. Ah, Coming to you live. Well, live or, two or days later. Two, two days later. <laughs> two. <laughs> All right. Well, so, that's great. Great to hear. Well, there's there's a boom right on <laughs> right on recording here. All right, uh, Clemson Notre Dame. Clemson favored by five and a half points. And I don't know why I said I, probably, I don't know why I said three thirty. I thought I thought Ohio State game was at three thirty. That's for the Maryland game. It's all good. Yeah, I've Never I've mind. I've been thinking about the Maryland game more too. Oh boy. All right. All right, who you got here? Clemson or Notre Dame? Clemson. Easiest pick of the week. Easiest pick of the week. I I know Lawrence isn't playing. I know they struggled last week without Lawrence. I get it. Mm-hmm. I get it. I think they're going to be fine this game. All right. Um, their, their quarterback, DJ, last name I can't pronounce, and I'm not going to try. Uh, he had his first ever start. He's a young guy, incredibly highly touted quarterback. Went out there and just didn't have a good first game that he was thrown into the week of. You're an incredibly young, incredibly inexperienced quarterback. You find out you're starting that week. 
that was a tough situation to be thrown in. He was rattled. He got better as the game went on. He'll be much better this game. Well, Clemson he's going to be playing a lot better defense here too. Clemson just out, just outclasses Notre Dame from a talent perspective. Mm -hmm. The only reason they looked as bad as they did last week was because Boston college showed up super ready and Clemson did not. And Clemson didn't have Trevor Lawrence. Their backup quarterbacks going to play better this week. And Clemson will either plays down or plays up to their competition level. They're Mm going to go into this Notre Dame game looking like the Clemson team that blew the doors off of Miami because they're actually going to show up ready. Yeah, and also Clemson was without a couple of um, defensive players, too, if I remember, against Boston College as well, I believe. I'm not sure. But Uh, the point is, is that you just sort of have to figure out which Clemson shows up, and this is going to be the Clemson that slaughters Notre Dame. mm -hmm. Slaughters them. Five points, easiest bet of the week. Yeah, so I look here, like, okay, yep, Clemson scores a lot of points. They... They score about 46 points a game. They let up about 15 points. Notre Dame scores about 35, lets up about 10 points. Oh, who am I kidding? It's Clemson. (laughs) It's Clemson here. Even without Lawrence, there's only one other guy you have to really worry about here. You don't have Lawrence, but who's who's their main weapon here? Who's their main guy that's going to, who's going to, anytime he touches it, he has the chance to break it and score a touchdown any given moment. ETN. ETN. ETN is the difference maker here. Uh, I'll, Probably, I'll take I'll take Clemson here. This isn't. Yeah. You can you can you can double this, and I'd probably still pick Clemson. Yeah, I think I was shocked when I saw this. I was expecting to see like 15, 16, 17 is what the number mm-hmm. I was expecting to see. Yep. All right. And I would have it's, taken Clemson. Yeah. All right. Let's see what Austin says. He says here, anyone who watched any part of the Clemson game last weekend and thinks this is a good line is a fool. DJ, insert last name here, thanks, Jared, <laughs> actually played really well against BC. It was the defense that really let them down in this game, along with a few offensive miscues from other players. This line is indicative quarter, of Trevor real, not sorry, playing. Sorry, you finish. But I think Clemson is just that much better than Notre Dame. Also, don't trust Ian Book, no. but that's another conversation. I would take this all the way up to Clemson favoring 13 and a half. Wow. Austin and I really are in sync. He even misspelled Cincinnati the same way I misspell Cincinnati. <laughs> that's just, he's, he misspelled it in the email he sent us, and it's the that's same funny. way I do it. Right. <laughs> Uh, by the way, turnovers by DJ, insert last name here, put the Clemson defense in some bad spots. When you think too, like, wasn't he the one so that it's fumbled not, the ball? Yeah. Wasn't he the one that fumbled the ball right at the one yard line, returned it? That's a 14 point. That's a 14 point difference right there. Yeah. yeah. Instead of it's, Clemson scoring touchdown, that's Boston's college touchdown. Yeah. That's a 14 point turn turnaround there. Yeah. He, to say that he had a good game, I I do not agree with. I I don't either. Not, I think, not I think in the Clemson, first half. I think Clemson anyway. Clemson made some great second half adjustments because I don't I, I don't think Boston I think, College scored. I'm going to double check. I don't think Boston College scored a single touchdown or a point actually in the second half. I'm going to look here. Yeah, Clemson's they sh- they shut them down that second half. Clemson's halftime adjustment against Boston College is when they went to the locker room and then they took their head out of their ass. Mm-hmm. That that was the halftime adjustment. Like, oh, maybe if I take my head out of my ass. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, and it was and it wasn't um, DJ that fumbled it. It was a different running back. I don't know if that was ETN or not, but either way. All I, right, moving on. Was moving it on, on a on. handoff though? It was I, a handoff, and it was a bad handoff. So yeah. I, he get, even if he doesn't get the fumble in on the stat line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Kyle, we have one last game. All right. Yes, we have, we have your fighting Buckeyes in Columbus, seven thirty prime time on BTN. Taking on 
the state of New Jersey, Scarlet Knights. The state of New Jersey? New Jersey the, State? The state of New Jersey. Oh, the state of New Jersey. Yes. I apologize. It's the state of New Jersey, Scarlet Knights. Is it now? Ohio State is a 37 and a half point favorite. It's that half point that gets you. That half point. Kyle? Mm hmm. Did you say Columbus? I believe I did. You did. Did you say Ohio Stadium? No, I didn't. No, you didn't. You're you're good at you're getting better at this. Uh, <laughs> did you say BTN? I did. Uh, did you say New Jersey? The state of New Jersey. Did you say Buckeyes? The Fighting Buckeyes. So you know what time it is. It is time to know your enemy. Always be selling, right, YouTube? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Always be selling. <laughs> know your enemy. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Oh, that's what their name is. Oh, see, and, and you were so close. You were <laughs> so close, Kyle. So close. Rutgers coming into this game one and one. Hey, hey. Good job. They have a win in the Big Ten for the first time since, what is it, 2017? Something like that. Something like that. Something really bad. But hey, Greg Schiano bringing Rutgers back from the grave, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, all right, Jared, what do, you, what do you want to talk about with this Rutgers team here, other than they have a nice shade of red? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lovely shade of red. So, Rutgers beat Michigan State. Mm -hmm. Michigan State beat Michigan. Therefore, mm -hmm. in the flawless transitive property, Rutgers is better than Michigan. If you say so. And that's no your enemy. Good night, everybody. Now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This is painful. And Jared and I were talking before we, we hit the record button here. Like I'm, I, I'm a stats person. I love looking at stats and pulling up numbers and reading numbers off to you. But I look at this and I'm like, holy shit. How did this <laughs> team even win a game? <laughs> how they, did they win a game? Because Michigan State's that bad. Uh, well, so let's, let's take a look. You ready to take a look? Let's let's take you, a look. All right, let's take a look here. Uh, oh, that didn't do the thing I wanted it to do. Come on, Are you computer. Looking at the Michigan State Rutgers game here. That's what I was trying to do, but all right. it, it it's not doing the thing that I wanted it to do when I clicked right. on it. Well, I will I will, t I will tell you this though, Jared. Michigan State had seven turnovers. That's 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 the number I wanted. I couldn't remember seven if it was seven or they six. Had, they had Lombardi threw two interceptions. And the team lost five fumbles. So let's <laughs> five fumbles. Rutgers didn't even get 300 rush, 300 yards total. Y uh, yardage total 276 to 369. Nice. First down. <laughs> 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 Time of possession, basically even Michigan state had more first downs. Uh, it, it wasn't, it's not, it's not what you would call a clean win. No. And again, I'd like to point out that Michigan state actually terrible. Yeah. But I tell you what, yeah, Michigan state's terrible. I mean, they had 50 yards on the ground. I mean, Ohio state is now, now is Rutgers that good on defense? Cause they held, they held Indiana to, um, a buck nine on the ground too. They held them to 2.7 yards per carry. Does that mean that Indiana or that Rutgers rushing defense is that good? No, <laughs> they just both teams, both Michigan state and Indiana's rushing attack is just that bad. Yeah, this is guys, this is not a good team. Uh, one of the things that Kyle and I always attempt to do on this podcast is be honest we like to be honest with you guys. You know, we 
prepared you for the Notre Dame game. We told you that, or Notre Dame, Penn State, for the Penn State game. And we, we tried to set proper expectations for you that it wasn't going to be some sort of blowout. The Penn State, despite losing to Indiana in week one, was actually a pretty good football team. We let you know that Nebraska, while not great, is and was a team that was progressing in the correct direction. Now, even we were surprised by Ohio State's struggles up the middle. But, yeah, it's, I mean, it is what it is. It's, it's Rutgers. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to, I don't want to come on here and be like, here's all the reasons why Rutgers is good, actually. Because, eh, I mean, they're a team trending in the right direction, but that's pretty easy to do when you were at rock bottom. Because yeah. that's that's where Rutgers was. Kyle just said it that they hadn't won a game in the Big Ten in years. You know when the last time Rutgers had a better record, overall record than Ohio State? Oh Lord! You want what? to take a shot in the dark here? What was it? The lost season? Well, I'm was not going Rut- to include that. I'm not going to include that. You have to. You can't just not include it. No, no, no. I don't. I don't mean. No, no, no. Not. <laughs> Not not the retracted season. Oh, I see. Yeah, you're right. The you lost right. season. Mm-hmm. You are right. Yep. When Ohio State went six and seven, Rutgers, under Greg Schiano, yeah, went nine and four. But yeah. before that, before that though, you got to look way back to 1988. I believe that was yeah, that was John Cooper's first year. Rutgers went five and six. Fun times. Guys, this team's not very good. We're not going to yep. Ohio state's a 37 and a half point favorite for a reason. Yep. They, they have some talented players. Of course they do. Mm-hmm. Uh, most, most notably a transfer from Ohio state. Many of you probably recognize the name Brandon white. Yep. Is their starting free safety? I think he's like third in total tackles on the team right now. He has 17 in an interception and a fumble recovery already for the year. Um, he wears number seven. So in case you guys are curious on where he's at and want to just general knowledge, he wears yeah. number seven on defense there. Yeah. Uh, Bo Melton's a pretty decent wide receiver place for them. Um, guys, I'm just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do this thing where I, I pretend that Rutgers is good. Rutgers is a bad football team. I I like, I like that Greg Sean is already making some progress with them. I like that. I like good for them that they beat Michigan state. They had to be plus five in the turnovers to do it. The statistics on a team losing Mm -hmm. when plus five in the turnovers is non-existent. I know and the NFL is a completely different animal because so many of the teams are so close to one another, especially compared to college from a skill level. But the number in the NFL that if you're plus four, that's four, not five, four in the turnovers that you win like 94% of the games. Yeah. I was expecting that to be more of like 99%. Well, maybe it is for five turnovers. (laughs) Either way. Um, even though they were plus four against Michigan state, they still only won by 11 points. Yeah. Guys, this is not a good football team. We're not going to, we're not going to pretend that it is. And we're mm-hmm. really just not going to spend a lot of time breaking the biggest, the down. biggest question though, is will Rutgers cover? That's probably going to be the biggest question. Will Ohio state cover this game It is 37 and a half points. I, I, you know, that's, that's, that's what we're here to answer, Kyle. That's our job. All right. Uh, we're not, we're not quite there yet though. Uh, before we do that, uh, included in our, included in our know your enemy section is the sub section of Austin's over unders. All right. Uh, what do you, Austin, what does Austin, Austin getting, have here? Austin getting more play on the podcast today. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's see. Rutgers first downs over under 11 and a half for reference. Penn state had 15. Nebraska had 17 under. I'm going to go with the over. I'm going to go with the over. All right. Not by the, much. 
Austin revealed to us over the Discord in the uh, Discord server that he is in fact tracking these. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you. So he had so Rutgers had sixteen against Michigan State and nineteen against Indiana. I it think means, I think they'll get just. I think they'll get right there at twelve. I know it's eleven and a half. I think is the perfect place to put that. I think mm. that's. I think that's the perfect line. Yeah, but I'm going under. Um, amount pass attempts for all backup quarterbacks combined. Ooh. Does that include Rutgers? All it says all backup quarterbacks. So yes. Okay, I'm gonna go over. Uh, I think Ohio. I think Ohio State I gets agree. fields out rather early. And I really have no idea what Penn State's doing in the quarterback room. Maybe they get a guy in there. Because even if Ohio State gets their backup quarterbacks in there early, they'll primarily be handing off. But add Rutgers into that equation. And I think 16 and a half is is possible. Is very possible. Mm-hmm. Especially and then if if and then if like if there's an injury, then you blow right past that number. All right. Amount of missed field goals. One and a half. Uh, I'm assuming this one's just for Ohio State. Yeah. Uh, I would have maybe said over, except the black stripe news. Mm -hmm. Yep. Maybe under. I'm going to go under. He said he almost made it 0.5. That would have been more interesting. Amount of sacks for Haskell and Tommy Togiai combined <laughs> over under one and three quarter. <laughs> I'm going to go with over. I'm going to go with over here. I'm going to go under. I think it's the defensive ends turns, uh, the defensive end turn to, to feast. All right. The, um, uh, the coveted amount of catches by tight ends at four and a half. As much as this is the year of the tight end, I don't think they have to rely on them as much in this game. I'm going to say under. I'm going I, to get the young, I'm going to get the the freshmen, the shiny freshmen more touches in the wide receiver group. Okay, but here's my thing. If this does, if this plays out the way we expect it to, and if Justin Fields gets pulled early, tight ends are a lovely, lovely safety blanket for true freshman quarterbacks. It is. So for that reason, I'm going to go over. All right. It is the year of the tight end. Uh, Amount of yards for Olave and Wilson combined at 199.5. Well, that is a great number because they are combining. (laughs) They both are combining for a hundred yards a game. Yeah. Over a hundred yards a game. Yeah. Over. I'm going to say under. Just because the same reason for the last one, too. I think they're going to get a lot more touches with other receivers as well. The ball is going to be shared across so many players in this game. All right. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What if we include rushing yards in this? It doesn't say reception. Mm. Amount of yards. Because... I'm going, to say, a, I'm going to say no to that too, because I don't think they're going to do another handoff like they did with Wilson to start the game against Penn State. Uh, I think they're going to try to get. I think they're going to try to do the basics, really try to establish that running game. Um, want to see if they can continue to build off of their improvement on the running game, like they did against Penn State. So I don't think they're going to try to do anything too fancy. So I, I'd be surprised if if a wide receiver has like more than like 20 yards. Okay. Uh, I'm still going over. And I simp- I say that simply because I feel like there's a real good chance that both Alave and Wilson have some like distance touchdowns. So it's a lot of cheap yards. Maybe. Yeah. All right. Uh, amount of defensive turnovers for the Buckeyes at two and a half. I'm going under here. Yeah, I'm going to go under. I'm trying to remember how many turnovers have Ohio State had for the year. Because I don't know. Have they forced? That's the question. How many? How many oh, turnovers will Ohio State force? 
Let's look here. I honestly don't feel like Rutgers is going to have enough plays. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know that they're going to have enough plays to generate they that are, many turnovers. Ohio State is averaging one and a half turnovers per game. Takeaways. Yes. Yeah. So even then, that number feels high. Mm-hmm. And again, yeah, I just... I don't feel like Rutgers is going to have a ton of plays. No, I don't think so either. Okay. I'm going under here. All right. Should have made that one one and a half, Austin. <laughs> All right. Uh, now we do the subsection of know your enemy where Stuart E4 us vet forces us to say names that are hard. Uh, there's some doozies on this Rutgers team. All right. Let's just do a few here. We are over on time here. So we're always over on. Yeah. Okay. Um, Let's start with the running back here, Jared. Uh, Isaiah Pacheco? Pacheco. Pacheco. I like that. I like that. All right. uh, Tight end Matt Alamo. Uh, I feel like I'm ignoring one of the vowels in the middle. Alimo. Alimo. Then there's the left tackle, Tunde. (laughs) Uh, but to z- I, nope, I'm out. Moving Batukasi. on. Batukasi. <laughs> See, you're you're going at it as if it is Japanese. I think it's Polish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, these are terrible. Um. Well, there's my, a, there's another one too. They're starting linebackers. The I wonder I wonder if they're brothers. Uh, I would assume so. Batukasi. I don't know. Mm. Uh, mm, man, these are these are brutal. Uh, these defensive are. tackle Mayan Anatu. Ah, uh, Anat. Oh boy. Uh, this one doesn't have any vowels in it. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, place kicker guy Fava. Fava. I'm gonna go Fava. I'm gonna go long a. Okay. Maybe 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 just fave. I like the the backup long snack s- <laughs> long <Snacker>. snacker. <laughs> the long <laughs> snapper. Matthew Sportelli. 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 Yeah. All right. Uh we we hit most of those. <laughs> let's <laughs> let's try and keep an hour let's keep an episode under an hour and a half for once, Kyle. All right. All right. Ask All right. Sloop Cass. Let's do these quick. Uh, what school slash schools should Jimmy Harbs be sending resumes to? None. Um, none. NFL. Get back nice. to the NFL, Jimmy Harbs. Yep. All right. Duncan also asks, what does Wisconsin's cancellation mean for the West and Champions Week representation? Probably. They're just going to go by records, I'm sure. They're just mm-hmm. going to go by records. And, and if Wisconsin East, has... The worst- the worst East is not going to play. So they have to play six games in order to be oh, eligible. I did not know that. I believe that's what it is. They have to play six games. So this is their second one. So if they miss one more, I believe that's what it is. And if, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what the case is. Someone let us know if Kyle is right or wrong, either maybe YouTube comments or on Twitter or because if that, in if our discord ca- server, if that's the case, then that means that the worst team in the East would not play then. Yeah, that, that's what it seems like. Uh, by mm-hmm. the way, we have a, uh, speaking of the discord server real quick, we now have a free section in the discord server. Uh, there's a spot just for our patrons. And then there's a public space uh, and you can join our discord server at discord.thesloopcast.com. Uh, this one's from Austin who has now worked his way Wait a minute. We did. We jumped in Ask Sloopcast, Kyle. We never gave our final predictions for the Ohio State game. Trying to rush to the end here. All right, Kyle. Uh, final predictions for the Ohio State game. Let's do it. All right. What do you have here? I have Ohio State with the win and the cover. Uh, I am going with a total of 62 points, uh, 52 to 10. 52 to 10. I have a total of 70 points. I have a total of 70 points. The final score of Ohio State 
what is what is that? Forty five. <laughs> you should do this backwards. I You're supposed to pick the backwards. final score, then add them <laughs> together, not pick a total and then divide it. All right. I have the final score, Ohio State fifty two, Rutgers eighteen. <laughs> awesome game prep, Kyle. <laughs> I had I had the I had the total score because I was going through. I'm like, hey, I'm going to go with that. I'm not really thinking too much about the final uh, score. What's, I'll go what's, with, what's what's Austin say? Austin says here the game of the week. Ohio State comes into this one rolling. Nebraska taking care of Penn State early. Really like Ohio State to win this one pretty comfortably, but maybe not as comfortable as as others may believe. Shiano and Rutgers is magic. And, all, and although they won't win this game, this isn't the Rutgers of year or two ago. I like Olave and Wilson to go off again and Ohio State wins. But he's taking Rutgers to cover. He, Final score 52 wrong. to 17. Wrong. Which, wrong. Gives, which gives him a total score point of 69. Nice. Uh, nice. Just, just, a, but just wrong. as a reminder, I believe like was it last year? Yeah, last year is when we had that really odd game when Rutgers was scoring a lot of points. Uh yeah, that sounds vaguely familiar. And wasn't yeah, the would... wasn't the spread last year like was it over fifty points for Ohio State Rutgers? It was something ridiculous, but it, the final score is fifty six to twenty one. Uh, wasn't the spread? Something stupid like 51, 52 points for Ohio State Rutgers last year. It was something. You don't have to look it up. I don't even know where you'd find that. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, Austin, Austin question. Uh, ask Sloopcast, what would you say the odds are that Olave or Wilson wins the, Bl- the Belitnikoff? If anyone does not know, that is wide receiver of the year. I'd say pretty good. Yeah. Alave um, is double current... your double your odds here. <laughs> well, you, you could also split the voting. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, let's see Olave, And you know, we're two games in, so let's not get too crazy with the is current. Ola- Olave has the touchdowns right now. Yeah. So yeah, let's, let's not get too, too crazy with currently pacing only two games in, but pacing over a hundred yards a game and two touchdowns a game. In a shortened season of nine games, that's uh, he's going over a hundred yards a game enough that he's going to hit a thousand yards, and then eighteen touchdowns. Now he's not going to keep that two touchdowns a game pace up, but even if it's fifteen or fourteen over nine games, that's still amazing. Yes, absolutely. And by the way, Jared, it was fifty-two. Fifty-two was last year. 52 point favorite and Ohio State scored 56. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, let's see. Where are we now? Uh, Ooh, another is... one from Austin. Will Indiana be undefeated by the time they and Ohio State play? No. If you listened earlier, I said no. Because <laughs> I, think, I think Michigan will win. I don't think Michigan will win. Uh, Let's see. Trying to find this real quick. Trying to find it real quick. Uh, Michigan, Michigan State are the two teams in the way. They beat Michigan State. And, you know, Kyle and I might disagree on what happens between Indiana and Michigan, but it's a coin flip-ish, right? It's it's a 50-50-ish. Maybe a 55-45. So, what are the chances? I'd, I'd say... Slightly worse than 50 50. What are the chances, Indiana? Maybe like 40%. I'd say about 40%. All right. I was going to go with about 33, but. You're giving Michigan State too much credit. All right. Duncan says. Uh, He says save this for later in the year. Well, so. go ahead and just get his next one. All right. Next one, also from Duncan. Yeah. How State being featured for, on BTN for two weeks to boost those BTN ratings. 
or is it just a function of Rutgers and Maryland always being on BTN because the other networks don't want to waste space on them? It's both. Are you say, is it this or is it that? Well, it's both. You need Ohio mm-hmm. State on BTN for money. And <laughs> that's where Rutgers and Maryland belong. Yep. It's not an or. It's not either or. It's yes. Yes. All right. Last one here. Brawley says, according to DraftKings and FanDuel, Mac Jones and Justin Fields have surpassed Trevor Lawrence as Heisman favorites. This is true. If both went out and have impressive campaigns, does Fields get the nod since this is surely his last year? The stuff like that shouldn't factor in, but sometimes does. Um, it's It'll just come down to the stats. And I just, I don't think Mac Jones is... If if you're if you're being real honest with yourself, and I'm not saying this because I'm an Ohio State fan, if you're being real honest with yourself, Mac Jones is a guy. He might be he's putting up great, great numbers, great numbers right now, but Mac Jones is a guy. Uh, the wide receivers at Alabama are nuts, absolutely nuts, and yeah, the Ohio State wide receivers are also absolutely nuts. But if you're actually watching the games. Mac Jones is throwing a lot of 50-50 balls. Justin Fields, on the other hand, is deciphering defenses, putting the ball in perfect placement in tight windows, throwing his wide receivers open with proper timing and proper routes. A lot of the Mac Jones stuff is like, my guy will get it. (laughs) And I'm not saying Mac Jones is bad. Don't, don't, (laughs) don't, don't take that as me saying Mac Jones is a bad quarterback. I'm not, I'm not saying that. But he's also just not on Justin Fields' level. No. And no. most people aren't. Everyone knows how I feel about like Ian Book and, and guys like that. Give Put Ian Book at Alabama and see the numbers he puts up. Because mm-hmm. the wide receivers are just insane at Alabama right now. Yes. All right. That is our last Ask Sloopcast question. That is our last everything. That's it for the show. We got it all. I think we got it all, Kyle. I think that's it. Oh, shit. I never did the second coffee read. I guess I'm doing it right now. Uh, (laughs) In the audio version of the podcast, I will cut this in a place and put it earlier in. (laughs) Mm -hmm. YouTube, you guys get this raw. Welcome, YouTube. All right. Uh, Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a world-class hand-roasted micro-batch coffee company. They're based out of Perrysburg, which is near Toledo, Ohio. Uh, Their coffee is fair trade certified and USDA organic. Uh, You might go there and get a little bit of a sticker shock on how much the coffee costs, especially if you're used to buying stuff like at Kroger or Walmart or whatever. Uh, but these are the bags. I'll put it next to my head for scale. What's up, everybody? The coffee is amazing. Like I said, it's all freshly roasted. So you're not getting stale coffee. You're not getting something that was in a warehouse in the back of the grocery store, on the shelves at the grocery store for weeks on end. It's not roasted until you order it. If you're getting it ground, obviously it's basically getting ground, put in a bag, stuck in a box and shipped to your house. If you live near Toledo, you can pick it up at the store. You don't have to wait for it to be shipped. Uh, If you don't live near Toledo, you get free shipping for every order over 50%. Some of their more popular flavors are available in K-Cup. And like I said, it's, it's, it's a company that's based on integrity. It's owned by veterans or at least a veteran. Uh, it's, uh, have an amazing selection of coffees. And like I said, it's, it's just, it's high level, both from a quality standpoint, but also from an integrity standpoint. It's a company that, like I said, is all fair trade and it does all that stuff right. And again, you're supporting a veteran-owned company and you're supporting an Ohio-owned company. It's win frickin' win, baby. That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, You can find a bunch of great coffees at ironbeancoffee.com. That's ironbeancoffee.com, America's local coffee roaster. 
Okay. Now it's the end of the show. Uh, we're bad at our job sometimes. Uh, let's see. Want to encourage everyone, like I said, check out the Discord server. Uh, there is now a public section of the Discord server. We just opened it. We just opened the Discord server, so uh, it's not very populated yet. So don't don't get too scared off by that. Especially the public section is not overly populated by that. But again, it's free. Just go to discord.thesloopcast.com, sign up for the server, uh, join a bunch of like-minded Buckeye fans. Uh, I, I know during our political season uh, that Twitter and Facebook and a bunch of other traditional so, 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 social media places became unbearable. So uh, basically we've carved out our own little section of the internet uh, and we call it discord.thesloopcast.com. Come check it out. If you want access to the premium channels and a, early access to episodes, um, a bunch of other cool stuff, uh, merchandise, among other things, you can check out the podcast Patreon page at patreon.thesloopcast.com. And you can basically help us keep going and help us add more features to the podcast, maybe add an additional episode to the podcast, do a bunch of cool crap, uh, which is uh, what we want to do. But we, we need a budget to do it. And so even if you give us like $3 a month, that gets you access to most of the premium stuff. And that, that would be fantastic if you could help us out. And again, it's $3 a month. It's not a big mm -hmm. deal. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's all the spiel I feel like doing. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? A um, couple of things. One, Scary Terry. Okay. I, scary hate that, Terry. I, I hate that nickname. Terry McLaurin. I hate that nickname. Now, now with the Washington, the Washington football team is now captain. Oh, wow. Yeah, can, he is can, a captain for the Washington just, football team. Just get team promoted midseason like that? He did, yep. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, that, that's pretty awesome. Uh, one other thing that I like... Um, as a, as a second-year player, by the way. Yes. One thing that I like, um, Tony Gerdeman over at the Buckeye Scoop, um, it's behind paywall. I won't go too far into this, but every Wednesday night, he has his own like Wednesday night GERD chat. So he has a bunch of interesting things that he likes to post about yeah. and just little tidbits and all that. Did you know, Jared, we kind of covered this Rutgers giving up 79 and a half yards on the ground per game. That means that Rutgers has the fourth best rushing defense in the country. Good for them. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see how that goes. Rutgers has allowed just four rushes of over 10 yards per game. Ohio State has allowed eight, but yeah, yeah but, okay. I'll just say, but <laughs> this is stats are fun. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Stats, stats are, are fun, fun, yeah. Or rather, the story behind stats and why stats are sometimes an anomaly are fun. All right. Uh, anything else in Kyle's corner? Uh, I want to have an over under for everybody. Um, Send us a um, comment in YouTube. Shoot us a Twitter message or if Discord. You're a sloop, or if you're a Sloop Cat, go shoot us a message on Discord. Or if you're not a Sloop Cat, shoot up shoot us a message on this uh, on the Discord here too. I'm going to set the over under at five and a half. Five and a half incomplete passes from Justin Fields. Ooh. Okay, I'm not, over that, or under. So that that's for everybody else. I don't get that, to participate in that. That is for everybody. Five and a half incomplete passes for Justin Fields. Ooh. Well, let's know what you think. That's that's a that's a good one, Kyle. I like that. Uh all right. Uh, anything else in Kyle's corner? That's it. Let's right. end the show here. Yeah. Uh tonight's ending music will be by the new Bomb Turks, uh, a nineties punk band from Columbus, from from Ohio State maybe more specifically. So new bomb Turks, a little bit of punk music. Uh, we'll get right in and out because it's a, it's a punk song. <laughs> uh, you can check the show notes for, for all of the information links to, they probably don't have a band camp page cause they're, they're not current. Uh, but there'll, there'll be links down in the, in the doobly do for something uh, as, as, as well as the name of the song. Um, you can check out all of our links, including merchandise. We're both wearing some Sloopcast merchandise tonight. Um, 
you can check all of that out. You can find all the links for that stuff at the Uh That's the Uh That's just going to get you a bunch of links to a bunch of other stuff. That's, that's just a campsite page where it gets you links to other things. So you can, you can check all that stuff out there. So once again, ending today's show is the new bomb Turks. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course support your local podcasters. Once again, New Bomb Turks. We're going to do it, Kyle. We're going to get in under an hour and a half. I mean, just barely. Barely. (laughs) Third episode? We have to start talking about doing a third episode, Kyle. This is, this is a thing. That or we just have to start the show with the slew picks for now on. <laughs> just like immediately into the slew picks. All right, let's rejoin our audio listeners. Whenever you're ready, Kyle. And this episode of the Sloopcast was brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, an Ohio-based company, where they have 14, currently 14 seasonings for you to choose, each bringing their own uniqueness depending on the type of barbecue you want to grill. Um, Want something that has a little kick to it? Do the Snoring Heat. Want something with a lot of kick? Do the Four Horsemen. Or the want something with want something with some bourbon in it? The old fashioned. There's a lot of different varieties over at the madcanadianbbq.com. That is the madcanadianbbq.com. Be sure to use the promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, I told you uh, why. You should shop there. Now let's talk about what you should get while you're there. Uh, Let's see. I have a bag of the cast iron right here. This is one of the ones that showed up in the sampler. Uh, This this is a sampler bag, so it doesn't get all the the fancy artwork like you might be seeing here or with the with the unicorn. Uh, But that one up there, that's the ride or die. Uh, That's a 100 percent organic Brazilian uh, tumbled with cocoa nibs. Uh, vanilla beans and vanilla beans. Uh, it's, uh, it also has like kind of a bourbony flavor to it. It's, it's excellent. Uh, the cast iron, uh, is a medium roast coffee, uh, that is a 100, uh, 100% single origin Hondurian Arabica bean. That's the cast iron. Um, I still have the seal on it, but with, you know how it is with coffee bags, you kind of squeeze it and you can smell it. It smells great. Uh, there are, uh, like I said, there's a ton of great ones. Uh, here's the drink from the skull of your enemy, a traditional Indonesian coffee that is eager, uh, <laughs> that is edgier and smokier, thick, creamy, chocolatey notes of strong cedar, sweet tobacco, wine, and spice. That one sounds great. I'm gonna have to pick up a bag of that. All that more can be found at ironbeancoffee.com, America's local coffee roaster. O-H? I-O? Uh, YouTube. My face. Playlist. Kyle's face. Subscribe. You can subscribe to here or the Buckeye Scoop, depending upon where uh, where you're watching this. We don't care where you... Well, we want you to subscribe to both. We don't care where you listen. But please subscribe to both. Subscribe to the Buckeye Scoop YouTube channel, as well as our YouTube channel, if you do not mind. And uh, follow us on Twitter and do all that happy, happy stuff. All right. That's uh, go ahead and click one of the face links now. Peace.